Good morning. Good morning. The two cameras going. One, two. They taught you something in school. They taught me something in school? How to count. I can even go to three. So, Hans Kamein, you got a message from a guy yesterday evening. Well, I talked with Chris. Chris, who lives in a small town uh, around Toronto, and uh, been, he's 28, something like that. Been uh, together with a girl for about seven years, working, uh, job, he has a job in Walmart, and he's just, he has a growing sense of not being fulfilled. It's been, uh, hearing some of our stories, some of the other guys' stories. And uh, yeah, just with the years, he has been feeling like there must be something bigger and more adventurous than this. The relationship is kind of good. The job is kind of good, but not really. Like a, yes. a blanket that covers him, but not, not quite. Yes. And so, he called me and uh, well, we got in contact and I got on call with him and he made a, a commitment to get out of it. And he says, by the end of the year, I will be in Japan. Because <laughs> he really loves the, the more... Free of the girlfriend? Yeah, he broke up with the girlfriend. He said uh, it wasn't, it's not, yeah. It's not as, 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 as great as he would like it to be. He's going to give up his job and... Uh, Just head to Japan? Yeah. And I said, what are you going to do? He's, I don't know yet. <laughs> That's so great, man. Yeah, That's he, so great. He really, well, he really, we talked about that actually. He talked about the, because he's been in Japan before and he spoke about the, the honor, you know, and the, the way he feels there, how people... Uh, it feels more respected, you know, more spacious. Yes. I could totally relate to that. You know? I could totally relate to that culture of, of honor and taking the other in consideration. But it's great, man, because because he's a like we had Lungisani or or Anthony. They're eighteen, nineteen, you know. And I told and and they have they make a big decision. Lungisani goes from South Africa to Poland. Anthony leaves home. And in a way, Chris has it is 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 even a more courageous step because he has ten years of conditioning into like this is the right way, you know. He's in a traditional relationship. He's he has the job. He has money, you know. He's gonna he, he's gonna give that all up, you know. So he has a more to lose in a way uh, than those very young guys. So I think it's you know I I, I saluted him. I salute him, Chris. To, for, to make that commitment, you know, to say, fuck, one short, precious life, this is not great enough, I'm going to risk something. I love it, man. <laughs> yeah, it really, it really uh, gets me going because we get so conditioned for mediocrity. Mm. We get so conditioned to tolerate a life that's okay, mm. you know, that's good enough, maybe. And uh, it's not about that particular girlfriend or that particular job, but it's about how alive we feel inside. And, uh, you know, if we don't feel a great call to adventure or a great call to honor or both in our lives, I think there's a lot of negative consequences mm. that come from that. Whether we, because one thing we can do, and we actually started this, uh, this morning dialogue about three months ago talking about this. We talked about uh, addiction. And one of the things that an addiction is mm. for, the purpose of it for a lot of guys, is to give them some sense of aliveness mm. from a world where they don't have much of it. Right. You know, you go into a Walmart, into an artificial environment, artificially lit environment, and uh, you know you're you're living a certain kind of life, and you you're you're this animal, this this human being who for is the result of millions of years 
a billion years of, of evolution, you know, designed to thrive in nature on this planet. Mm. And uh, we're in all these artificial environments and we're oftentimes living a life that takes our aliveness level way down. Mm. And so we look to things that are poor substitutes, whether it's Netflix or, or um, yeah. you know, different kinds of addictions. We're looking for stimulation, we're looking for aliveness. And the other thing, if you remember what we were talking about. Instead of getting addicted to, say, adventure or honor. Yeah, well, the other thing that what we do with addiction, we try to numb out yeah. a life that where we're not the what we want numbness from is our awareness that we're tolerating right, right. less than a live life the guilt and the regret and the yes yes so um, we zone out so the the addiction is both a, a yearning a call for to go for aliveness yes and a numbing out that we don't answer yeah the, the call. addiction is a symptom that we yes okay got it a symptom that we want that you know and uh, a sign that we want it yeah, okay, we're yearning for aliveness. Anyway, I'm very, I don't know, I'm bringing it back to him, but I'm, I'm so inspired, you know, because I'm like, I'm even the one, you know. I said, what are you going to do there? <laughs> he says, I don't know yet, but I got to go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and I, I think that's, that's brave, man. That's brave and that's, it's needed. And uh, yeah, I once, think it's a great example. At least once in every man's life, he's got to pull up the anchor sail off into the unknown yes. and uh, find himself in the unknown. Discover himself exactly. anew in a new world. Yes, at least you know then, you know what's, what's out there. San has a phrase called, he uh, says, every great man, no, every great la life has a great renunciation. You know, to renounce whatever you're living in and, uh, and go and experience something different. You know, then at least you can make a more informed choice about what you want. Uh, we're not, as we were talking with Brady also, we're not saying, oh, you got to have this lifestyle where you travel all the time. We've got to have a lifestyle that's outside, say, uh, a marriage. You know, it doesn't really matter. You know? the lifestyle doesn't matter. But you sure, it's sure helpful to have a taste of several things and then make an informed choice. It's like... If you're a, a wine critic, you know, which wine critic would you trust more? The one who tastes two wine and gives his preference or the one who tastes 200 and says, this is the best one for me. So, you know, how can a woman, how can a woman you're going to marry, how, how will she trust you if you haven't seen something else? You know, how could she trust you if you haven't had some sense of adventure? You know, how could she trust you if, if you if you don't have access to other women, you know, what's, what's your yes or if worth you, if you can't say no, you know? Yeah, and how much aliveness are you bringing, you know? Mm -hmm. if, you, if you feel inside that you are settling, that you are tolerating, that you are just, you know, society gives us this message in many ways that we just have to, quote unquote, settle down, just mm -hmm. grow up, just become responsible, it, you know, Becoming someone who takes on responsibility, becoming someone who's responsible, all this, this can all be great things. But if, but if the idea is, no, forget about your aliveness, forget about the call with, from within, forget about that deeper yearning, and just go along with this road that's been mm -hmm. carved out for you, then, uh, yeah, man, huge warning flags on that path. Yes. Down the road, you know, you, you get married to someone you're only kind of half interested in. You have a job you're only half interested in. What do you model for your children? You know, what do you bring to your wife? You know, how, it, yeah, I'm sure there's health ramifications yeah. to that as well. Yeah, it must be a hell yeah, you know, and the, the trouble is not the marriage, is not, you know, it's, it's that uh, we go into it assuming that's what we need to do, supposed to do, without making a deliberate, informed, real choice, you know, without uh, sacrificing, for example. It could be great, you know, but we're just slipping into it like we slip into relationships, you know. How many times do I talk to guys and, uh, 
they're together with a girl, and they say, you, you, so you're together, your boyfriend, yeah, I could, like, slipped into it. What? You slipped into it? <laughs> and that's, that's a sure recipe for disaster, you know? And uh, that's what we often do. We slip into things, we glide into them without really making deliberate, conscious choices. And, and yeah. I saw this quote uh, yesterday that said, uh, a free man chooses, a slave obeys. Mm. Or a slave obeys and a free man chooses. But a lot of times we just become slaves to our habits, slaves to what's comfortable, slaves to the, the conditioning of society. Yeah. And we're just going along because it's what's comfortable today yes. and then tomorrow. And then yeah, the next day. It does require courage to say stop, you know, to not slip into that, to not give in, you know. And if you have given in, to fight back, you know. I'm imagining uh, Chris, you know, that's not an easy thing. He's really, he's 10 years into conditioning. He has probably to has a lot of people in his life who are going to warn him not to go. Yes. What are you doing? You're on a good path. Yes. What's going to happen in Japan? How are you going to make money? Like, they're going to map all of their fears yes. of the unknown onto him. Yes. So, big step, man. I salute you again, Chris, for doing this, <laughs> making that commitment. You know, I invited him also to... Uh, Maybe we'll see him in Japan. Yeah. Because I would love to go back, you know. But, uh, yeah, it's, it's so... You know, the more we, the more we get trained in it, the, the bigger the nest grows. The, the harder it is to jump out uh, or the bigger the, the prison and so he's making a big big leap which uh, yeah I think it's fantastic I'm ready to make a leap into unknown parts of Brazil you, you got your ticket right you're going back to uh, I go to Spain. Lisbon in uh, two weeks I want to see my parents it's been almost a year now I think and I want to see my parents as well yes but when you take off for Europe I've been thinking about getting a ticket to the north or northeast of Brazil mm. where I've never been where it's a, a bit more wild a lot a lot more of the unknown here on this island where we're at now is uh, pretty civilized pretty Western as German pretty, as Brazil gets <laughs> Yeah, it gets a little bit more German than this, actually. <laughs> yeah. You go someplace like Joinville. Yeah. yeah. I think there's actually some parts in the south of Brazil that still speak German. Are you serious? Some version of it, yes. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> Man, I, I, I love, I love like hearing about some place in some other land or the land that you're in where things are just like, really? Really? Like there's a, there's a city here where supposedly there's no men. Like it's run by women, they don't want men there. I would love to go explore that place. <laughs> go explore and take over, say so the picture in, is returned. You can get in, but we cut your balls off. Yeah. <laughs> and you wear a mask. <laughs> yeah. well, Not the mask! <laughs> yes. There's another part of Brazil that I've heard about. I, actually, I was here in Floripa. This was nine, nine years ago. I was in a hostel, and there was a guy uh, working here, and I think he was from like uh, Amapá or, you know, and I took note of it. I have to go look it up. And what he, what he said was that uh, the area where he comes from, there's very few men, and there's many women, like far more women than men. And... Uh, because he says like the, the men leave there to go work other places, to go find work mm -hmm. elsewhere. And what he says is like, you go get an apartment there and like women will just come seek you out. Like they'll come knock on your door. Great. <laughs> We've been here four months, you tell me this now. Thanks, man. Yeah, well, you gotta focus, man. You great focus. friend, what a great friend. Yes. <laughs> but I love hearing about these, you know, these places where things are completely different from mm. the world that you know. And then just landing there and, and figuring it out. Sit in your apartment, feeling. wait for the door to be knocked. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Adventure. Adventure. All right. Um, 
Yes, we'll see each other tomorrow. Uh, Chris, I got some things coming your way, all right? And in the meantime... Hans. Yes? We talked yesterday about doing an inner conflict diagram. Right. Uh, and announcing that. So, what's our announcement? <laughs> well, it When's really, it going to happen? It really depends on you. Yes. I was ready to commit to it yesterday, but... Uh, yes. I, you know, I've got some other priorities. One of the things I'm doing right now, I'm writing a guide and I'm calling it for, uh, for the working title is Secret Kingdoms, A Gentleman's Guide to Living Like a King in Far Off Lands, something like this. And uh, so I'm working on that. I'm also working on my book. I don't want to put too much other things ahead of those projects. But this is like a remaining undone thing that we've been talking about, I think even since we started doing this podcast about three months ago, is bringing the inner conflict diagram to the web. We brought the honor window to your group of guys uh, about a month ago, which was great. And I'd like to start doing more of this. Last week we did the honoring fathers. We had conversations about honoring fathers and we, we did a couple webinars about that. And uh, yeah, I foresee turning, you know, bringing to the, the Ronin Radio podcast these uh, live um, webinars. And uh, yeah, taking it to the next level. Put a date on it. Gathering men, brothers, Just like it elders. Just put a date on it. Honor. <laughs> Or you, you want to sing a song? It's the song by, uh, um, what's her name? Beyonce. Uh -huh. If you like it, then you should have put a ring on it. Uh -huh. So, if you mean it, then you should have put a date on it. There you go. For your inner conflict. Inspired by Beyonce. <laughs> yes. I'm not going to commit to a date right now. But it's in the future, gentlemen. That's it's in sure. the future. <laughs> it's coming. <laughs>